aggression nurturance, this is how boys say they like each other. I mean, you see this in school all the time. They're bumping into each other. They're socking them in the arm. They're hitting them on the butt. You look at sports. Look at how the guys interact in sports. That's saying, I like you. Rough and tumble play says, I like you. And all these kinds of things here. And in school, what do we say? Not allowed. No touching. No pushing. No shoving. So in strategies, you really need to think about how can we have some areas where boys can rough and tumble a little bit that's safe. And they have to know the rules. If you cross this line, we're done with this. But when we constantly are saying, you know, walk down the hall with your hands this, all that kind of stuff, boys say, school is boring. I don't like it. It's not fun. I have to sit down all the time. Think about how can we encourage some of the things that comes naturally normal for boys. So boys have, when they get emotional, they have more blood flow that goes down their spinal cord, which is connected to their extremities. So if a boy comes in the classroom and he's mad about what happened in the playground, he might push a chair out of the way. He might kick something. He might punch something, which is not okay at school, but initially you have to know it's normal. How do I give them some strategies that I have a soft Nerf ball or I have something that they can utilize at that time? The other thing is drinking water. And when anybody is stressed, boys or girls, you have cortisol levels that go up, and so get them to drink water. Are you getting some ideas that there are differences between boys and girls and how we might approach them in the classroom? Okay, good, because that's what I'm hoping to convey. So there I just talked about more blood flow and, and why you see. And the other thing is not always kicking something, but walking away. So in relationships, my husband's not very verbal. We're in a confrontation about something, and he says, I just can't talk about that. He walks out of the room. That's what's happening there. It's going into his body. I got to get out of here. I got to move someplace else. So now oxytocin is a chemical that girls have a lot more of, but boys also have oxytocin. It's just this thing that girls like to do things together. We like to shop together. We like to talk together. We like to sit by each other, all that sort of thing, where boys are much more individually motivated to do things, things women do that men don't tend to do. Standing in line in the grocery store, you say, I really like that blouse, to a complete stranger. And guys, you know, unless they're looking at a sports magazine or something, or they have on a Denver Bronco jersey, they might say something related to sports or cars. But we just want to bond with everybody. We want people to like us. We want to connect. We're eager to please. So, of course, in the classroom, that means please the teacher. You want me to sit down? OK. You want me to use colored pencils? OK. You want me to stop that? OK. And they will tolerate monotony more. So when a teacher is talking and it's not relevant or novel, girls, they may not be thinking and they're with you in their brain, but they're looking like they're with you. Boys is when they start tipping back in the chair, throwing something, poking somebody. They're just like, I'm over this. I can't contain myself anymore. But girls can tolerate monotony want to follow the rules. We talked about that a little bit earlier. And girls have more than boys. So instead of having aggression nurturance for girls, we have empathy nurturing, nurturance. So normally in the classroom, you'll see girls go up to boys and girls. Are you OK? What happened? So another example of this aggression nurturance that you'll see with kids that's so normal that sometimes is a little bit hard for girls or women to understand is, if there are a group of kids, so they're racing back and forth, boys and girls are about 12 years old, what happens is some, a boy falls down and skins his knee and it's bleeding. So the girl, several girls probably rush up, are you okay, do you need me to call somebody, we need to get a band, is that what they do? You know, is everybody okay? I mean, that's good, you need to do that. A boy, and they're on skates here, the boy skates up and says, get up, we need you. Forget that you're bleeding. You know, we need you. And of course, which one is the boy probably going to go to? The boy, because he wants to show, you know, I'm not going to, I don't need any of that stuff, you know, even though he might. But that's just how kids react differently. So in preschool, again, they will say on that checklist, shows empathy. Well, think of the, the sex of most um, preschool teachers as female, right? 
So we understand empathy like this. So when a little preschool boy wrestles with another little preschool boy having fun, sometimes female teachers don't get that as empathy. You see what I'm saying? But it really is. I like you. I want to be with you. So we have to kind of, this is that gender lens. Okay, I got to look at my own kids. I got to look at my own grandkids. I got to look at everybody to see what is really happening here. Is somebody being hurt or are they just showing their affection towards another person in a different way? Girls, of course, the problem is um, a lot of times because of that wanting to be liked and if they're on the outs, then they're mad. And girls are real obvious about it, you know. I mean, they can be sneaky and subtle, but what happens is in a preschool, they went, one little girl went up to the other one and just said right away, you're not coming to my birthday party. I'm not inviting you. Well, do you know how the other girl feels him? Then girls tend to tend and befriend when they're stressed, so then they go tell somebody else. Do you know what she said to me? I'm not, you know. So now we got a little posse going on. I'm sure you've seen this in the classroom with girls and how that tends to go on and on. So we've been sitting long enough now. We're going to play a little thing called gotcha. The strategies that I try to give you a lot of are things that you can use with your instruction. But sometimes you just need to relax a little bit. So I'm going to have this table come up, up here. Let's stand over here. Would you all just come and make a little circle here? And then I'll have you do that over there in a second when I say go. And I want you to put your hands out like this. And we're going to be in a circle. And I want you to take your right hand and put your pointer finger like this. And you're going to turn it and put it upside the palm of the person next to you about one inch above. And I'm going to say one, two, three, go. And I'm going to try to grab the pointer finger, but I'm going to try to keep mine from being grabbed. You see, so you're doing things on two sides. OK? One, two, three, go. <laughs> All right, so let's have you go, stand up, make a little circle there. We're going to do it three times. So get in position. I'll say get in position, then I'll say one, two, three, go. And you got to have it about an inch above, not like up here, okay? All right, one, two, three, go. <laughs> All right, get in, get in position again. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Last time. One, two, three, go. So what you know about the brain, why is that a good activity? Yep, good. There's competition in there and following the rules. What did you hear happening while we were doing that? Oh, making excuses, yep. I heard somebody usually say, you, you cheated, you cheated. Did you hear, it? what did somebody say? Laughing. So I want you to know that laughter is a stress reducer. So this is another strategy, stress reducer. If things are kind of tense, if you can tell a joke or something like that. But somebody tried this in their classroom in third grade, that before they gave their weekly spelling test, they did gotcha every week. And the scores went up. Because the stress went down, laughter promotes neurotransmitters for memory and alertness, and they were having fun doing it. And once you teach the kids how to do it, they can do it in 20 seconds, and you've done it three times, and then they sit down. And so gotcha has a lot of good things to it, but it also is just fun to be able to do that.